Hey guys, what's up? How we doing? Welcome back. It's your boy D, Daniel, right? And this is D's Daily DD. If you don't know by now, the DD stands for due diligence, which means that you do your homework, you do your research and all that good stuff, right? And then you also learn how to get diamond hands. I'm going to show you guys how I got these diamond hands, right? And why I'm still holding no matter what happens with the uh, price, especially on AMC. And uh, yeah, it's Friday. We made it through the week, guys. It was a rough one. A lot of volatility is back in the market. Uh, if you're a trader, you love volatility, right? Because that's actually, you take advantage of that and you take advantage of the, of the swings, right? And I do have some important information that you guys are going to want to watch this whole video uh, for AMC, guys, for Lucid, a little bit of BitFarm and Loopring, okay? Again, Loopring is a crypto, guys, that I'm really bullish on. Um, I have some really cool numbers that, that are out there right now that I can show you guys on why I think this thing is going to go insane all right so let's get into the uh, information all right and uh yeah of course i'm gonna wish you an awesome weekend uh, if you're doing some christmas shopping be careful out there. there's gonna be mad amounts of people i bet all right and uh yeah thanks to the new subscribers guys i'm at 69 right now one of my favorite numbers right for a lot of reasons <laughs> so uh yeah let's get into this information right so what i want to show you guys first is um oops that's the wrong screen here we go. What I want to show you guys first is this chart, right? We're bringing out the whiteboard again. And I'm going to explain to you why it's better to hold stocks through the long term. Um, because a lot of times you can miss out on a lot of gains, guys. If you just hold on and be patient, you know, that's why I have more of a buy in and hold strategy, even before this whole AMC thing. Uh, you know, some of the richest, wealthiest people that I've you know, looked into, they always say that buy and hold is a good strategy, guys. That's how you become wealthy, not just make a couple of bucks. Okay. And I'm going to show you this because just pay attention to this side of so far. So this side, what I'm showing you guys is my past mistakes, right? Remember, I'm here to bring you the knowledge and I'm here to give you my genuine opinion, guys. I'm trying to be honest as, as, as I can be. And uh, yeah, I want, I want you guys to learn from my mistakes, right? So this is the information I'm, I'm bringing forward to you guys. So a couple years ago, right, when I first started, my portfolio was around like $3,000, 3500 It's a lot more now, you know, luckily I invest a lot more because I've learned and I'm not, don't have as much fear as a new investor, right? Um, so when you take a look at this, so the first one I'm talking about is Tesla. I sold uh, five Tesla shares back in the day, about two years ago, uh, and I paid one ninety for them and I sold them for around two fifty. right? I was like, oh, I made a profit, you know? Let me get rid of these. And and at the time, I didn't know what was going on. And Tesla was actually part of a short squeeze, okay? It was a long short squeeze. It wasn't just a day or a week or whatever, but it dragged on and on and on, and it kept going higher and higher, which is what even Trade Trades has said, that it looks similar to what's happening to AMC, that he thinks it'll be a squeeze over time, right? But back to this. So I sold it for 250 made some profit. And it turns out if I would have waited, right, two years later, it would have been $1,300 a share, guys, right? So my five shares... You multiply that, I would have made a crazy gain, right? Just by paying 190 for those shares at the time. Another one, I sold one Amazon share and I paid about a thousand dollars. This was back then when it was around this price. I sold it for fourteen hundred and I was like, okay, cool. I I, I bought it, I made some profit. And guess what? Two years later, it was worth three thousand four hundred dollars. That's a, as of today. That's the price I checked. And then another one is McDonald's, right? I had about five shares that I paid 176 for. I sold them for 210 and right now it's sitting at 265 guys okay so that is where look at all the i'm not going to do the percentages of the math but i missed out on a lot just by selling them right well, well those are solid companies that go up over time and when you do your homework you know that you have your conviction and you just need to stick with it right so i just wanted to bring this up the next thing is that uh, we're gonna go over and, and we are gonna spend some time on the chart i want to show you guys what i saw today and also, but before we get into that, look, is I'm going to show you guys all this proof. So is AMC still a short squeeze play? Yes, absolutely. It's not a fundamental play, really, guys, right? The whole reason we got into it was because of a short squeeze play, okay? So if you move over here, watch, let me show you this. Here's the proof. Remember, so what is a short squeeze? A short squeeze is a term used to describe a phenomenon in financial markets where a sharp rise in the price of an asset forces traders who previously sold short to close out their positions, right? So they're trying to buy back shares that they sold into the market. We should know that by now if you're in AMC. Here's the summary, right? So 
I already went over that. Short squeezes are typically triggered by either an unexpected good news that drives a securities price sharply higher or simply by a gradual buildup of buying pressure that begins to outweigh the selling pressure, all right? And we're going to point that, that out today in the charts. As short sellers begin to exit their positions, it has more buying pressure in the market, which can cause the price to rise even higher, forcing them to cover their positions, right? That's the basic definition. So when uh, here's what we want to pay attention to. Typically unfolds after a stock has been declining in price for some time. What has AMC been doing, right? Declining, declining, declining since what? The 40s, okay? The decline in the price attracts more and more short sellers, which that's true. The, the short interest has been going up. They're taking out more shares and selling them into the market. That means they're owing more overall, right? At some point, considerable buying pressure begins to enter the market. It is usually the result of one of two things. And, and this can be unexpected good news, uh, such as the earnings report, right, which is coming in February, I believe is the next one. And they're saying that they're going to be profitable is the estimates, okay? It can also be a technical trader begin buying the security as they see indicators that it is oversold and therefore a possibility for right reversal. And that's one part of it, okay? Drives the stock price sharply higher. And the short sellers begin to see their profits erode or even worse, their profitable positions, they begin to turn negative, okay? Fearing that the stock will continue an upward move, they start to exit with the necessary buy order as previous short sellers enter buy orders to close out their positions. So they're buying, okay? Remember, they're buying if they're trying to close out. It adds fuel to the buying fire, attracting more buyers and pushing the stock price even higher. As the stock price continues to rise, more short sellers are gradually squeeze out of their positions all right how to spot a trade okay this is what i'm what i'm telling you guys why is this still a play the short interest is of the stock percentage right is higher and then the shorts are uh, held you know it's a higher percentage when the percentage of the stock's total shares that are currently so short is significantly higher than the normal level the likelihood of a short squeeze is considered to be increased another thing is the days to cover which that is going up right now. It's over two guys, which we've seen it go up. And um, there we go. And it's harder for them to exit because of the low volume. So today we had some of what of a high volume for the recent volume is 58 million right now. Right. So remember to, to that's what a short squeeze is, guys. OK, so that's why I, I'm telling you guys I am not leaving. I'm not selling. And you should always just risk what you can afford to leave in the market, right, guys? If you panic sold recently, that's because you were putting more money than you wanted to. You were over leveraging and stuff like that. The money and the shares that I have there, guys, I don't care what happens until we see the short squeeze. And the days to cover, check, right? And shares on loan, guys. This is the other thing. About 95 million shares are currently, it was at 100. I don't have today's Ortex data, but I'm going to look into it. But the last time I checked, it was about 95 million shares, and it's worth about $4 billion, right? And I have this to back it up right here, which is off market beat. So we go to market beat here, guys, and look at this data. Not much has changed, right? They still owe, as of the 15th, it was almost $4 billion. Remember, the short interest has been increasing, so they actually owe about $4 billion, I would say around 90-some million shares, okay? Currently, the real ones, not even the synthetics. Can you imagine if they were to pay those back, guys, how high this thing would go, right? That's what I back it up with. Now, let's move over to the chart because this is what I need to show you guys. We're holding this line, right? For some reason, it keeps moving back, even though it dropped already. You know, it tested it right here. It went back up. It dropped underneath it, made it back up, dropped again, and it bounced, guys. Look, this is the master trend line, guys. I took the absolute bottom, right, and I pushed it up all the way to touch. So I got more than three touch points there. And then you got another one right here, right? Where is it bouncing off of, guys? Right here. What I can see happening, guys, I'll tell you right now, but look at this. This, is, this pattern, guys, is the same. If we zoom in here... <laughs> You're going to trip out, right? This is the cycle theory that's out there. Everybody's been talking about. It. I agree with it because this is this is absolutely insane what it, what it just looks like right here. It's the same thing. Now I have, there we go.
right? You have a huge run up and a, and a come down. And you have to remember that back then, guys, when this run up happened, there was only 158 million shares in the pool. Right now, guys, there is 513 million shares outstanding. So remember, that's four times the amount of shares that they ended up adding to the, to the market, right? And you see the, the, the waves here. One, two, bam, and then we explode, right? You should not have any doubt in this because we were already right twice, right? So what, we have such a high percentage of being right again that it doesn't matter what the main media is saying and all that stuff, guys, because we know what we hold. Hold on to your shares as, you know, as much as you can because... This thing is not over, guys. Look at this. Now, what I'm going to point out here, this is what I expect coming here in the next few days because this is this is whack, guys. Look at this. You're telling me there was $277 million versus $262 million. Way more by buying pressure today, right? The market is supposed to work off buying and selling, guys. Supposed to, right? And look at this. More money's coming in. But we had a negative day. This reminds me of the days back in January, guys, in February, when we were doing these moves, right? March, when all of a sudden you would see more money coming in, but the price would go down. This is the same thing that's happening. I have pictures from way back then. And then the same thing, they're just ping-ponging us right now, right? The order's 100, 200, 300. You know what? It's really weird that in the after hours or the pre-market, you see the random numbers how you're supposed to, right? So I'm wondering if they're processing our orders in those hours, right? They're just pausing them. And during the regular market, they're just doing the ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, which walks down the price, okay? So that's that's what's interesting, okay? Now, check this out. We're going to zoom in here because if we are in this triangle, guys, in this wedge, we still can break out of this, right? And what I'm going to do here is draw you guys a polyline where we have this, this from the start, bam, bam. This is just what I expect to see in the next coming week, right? We're probably going to go there, get a fake out. Of course, we would have to come back down again. I expect it to be something like this, bounce, and then guess what? It has to be a break. That push is going to bring us right back to where we were right here. Okay. That's what I'm expecting to see. The, the options chain is already loaded. The market seems to trying to be back to reverse to the upside. Okay. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm looking for. That's my projection. Again, now, if we do end up breaking this, which it wouldn't make sense for us to break it. This is where it started. You had a rip. You come back down, double bottom, make a rip, guys. Come back down, double bottom, guys, make a rip, hopefully, right? That's the way the chart has been playing out, right? So we'll leave that there. Let me show you the trading view. You have to pay attention to this part, too. This is the AMC chart here, right? Guys, do you see this part, right? You see how the little pattern goes? People have already mentioned this, right? But this little dip, guys, what does this look like? Look at this little dip, right? What comes next? It looks identical, guys, that you have to maybe, you know, and they reversed it. It doesn't have to be every single move doesn't have to be the same, but maybe they reversed this. You see, this was a green. Maybe they just reversed it and it was a red, but then you still have your double touch and then it pops. All right. That's that's my if we see if we see high volume next week coming back into it and because this is a sale right now, guys, it doesn't like to stay under thirty dollars for very long. I'll tell you that. And check this out. It's the same pattern. Boom. All the way up to here. But instead of it going up and down, it went down and now we can get this up. All right. So the shorts can suck it. Right. And uh, yeah, guys, that's all I got for AMC. Um, I'm going to move on to Lucid, right? So let's check this out. Lucid is definitely, you know, bouncing around, having some, some struggles here. Now, this is the, the other master trend line. Like the, from the bottom, you grab the bottom. And as long as it doesn't break this, you look at where it bounced. It did break this, but there was a, a, a reason why there was fear. There was bad news that came out and all that. Um, but I'm going to show you the good news, the, the good side of it now, guys. So boom, as a gap, I expect this gap to be filled. So today I actually got into a call option 
Um, let's see. And you don't. I'm not saying to buy any options to do anything. This is. I'm just telling you what I did because this is where I see this going. So I got forty dollar calls for January twenty eighth, right? So the price is thirty seven. Um, I'm basically saying it's gonna be forty dollars or more by January twenty twenty eight. Now, because my target, this is my strategy, okay? My target, this is where I would exit. I'm looking for this gap to be filled. And I'm looking for uh, this option to carry me here. And then I'm going to exit, right? And I'm looking to, I bought it and I'm just going to sell it. I'm not exercising. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just buying and selling these contracts for profit, right? So I want to see it ride this trend line and then boom, make it its way back up to this, this zone right here, because this is where it's pretty comfortable trading at, right? Today, also something to pay attention to, this stock follows Tesla. If you look at the Tesla chart, it would be very similar to this today. Now, of course, you had the, the drop and then bounce action. But this right here, this is this is signaling a reversal, okay? It found the bottom, hopefully, right? And now we're going to ride this. It's going to make its way back up here. Especially because, like I said, the way charts work, guys, is they like to fill gaps, whether they're up or down, okay? Now, let's move on to the news part here. So Lucid did not dilute the pool. They already have 1.5 billion shares, something like that's outstanding, right? So you're looking at, um, this is how much money they raised in this offering that they put out. And they needed to, okay? But what you have to pay attention to is that this principal amount, they because they're going to be paying this interest, it's not due until 2026, right? It was a private offering, to persons reasonably believed to be qualified institutional buyers and uh what else and then there's also you know there's always other additional notes on it and they can also exercise this i believe it's like an option on there they're gonna pay this per year i believe right and they they're basically taking out a line of credit here is the way i i want to put it okay but it puts more money in their pockets so that they can grow. What's important to pay attention to is that whoever bought these guys, they paid $54.78 for a thousand notes. Okay. That means that they're paying more than the current price. The current price is $37.48. They believe that it there. Why would they be paying more than it's currently worth? Because they believe it's worth that or more, right? As far as the each share price, it's at thirty seven forty eight because of the bad news, the fear. But trust me, guys, I've seen this before. Watch it come back next week, maybe to the yeah to the forty five dollar level. And I'm not a financial advisor. Do what you want to do with your money. That's just what I'm playing right now. And I'm always going to give it to you straight, guys. That's why I can come here every day and talk to you guys and tell you what I'm doing because I'm being honest with you guys, and I will always be honest with you guys. Right? Give you my honest opinion. Because I'm not here, I'm not one of those channels that just says, oh, this is going to the moon, this is going to the moon. No, I'm here to, to, to tr give you the knowledge and to give you that experience so that you can also have the knowledge to go and make your own trades, your own profitable trades, right? And that's the key points that we need to pay attention to. You know, these investors, they paid more than it's currently worth. So why would they do that? They're not scared. We know what Lucid does, you know, they, we know that they have a, a good product. Uh, we know that they're making updates. They have a bright future, guys, right? Um, yeah, so look at something here. I remember that I need to point out. Let me find it. I think it was right here, yeah. This is what I mean. There's, they're not diluting the pool, guys. Look at this. Nor will there be any sale of the notes or any such shares in any state, right? Which is off will which such offer sale or solicitation would be unlawful okay so they're not diluting the pool guys they're just raising more money and giving these notes to investors all right um yeah that's all i got on on lucid uh, i don't think we looked at the order flow but we can look at it here real quick and uh, yeah so 49 versus 17 a lot of institutional buying those maybe those shares were purchased today right we don't know 335 versus 315 and 267 versus 252. So a lot of buying in Lucid today, right? And you see a little bit of green here. That's all good. 
Okay, now let's move on to BitFarms, guys. You know, I mean, it's doing what it needs to do right now. It's waiting, I think, for Bitcoin to make a move, and it's really struggling, I've seen. So we're going to look at the inflow right here, 0 to 0 0.47, 5.12 versus 6.35, and then 1.5 versus 1.5 later, all right, guys? Bring this baby down. And like I said, look, I drew this line. It's following it like it should. But I, I want to see a reversal. Look at that. You see, it's it's now hopefully finding a bottom, guys. So if you're bullish, we want to start making our way back up, guys. This is a this is a big drop compared to where we were, right? So the volume is the same until we see again that 10 million, 11 million, 13 million volume. Until we get some good news, guys. You know it, that's why it's bleeding. Um, but this is when you buy, right? You want to buy when it's low, sell when it's high. If this thing is projected, you know I've seen price targets up to like 15 dollars. Right now, you're 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 basically getting a chance to triple your money, right? But you just have to buy and hold, guys. Right? In my opinion, nothing crazy on the charts, guys. Like I said, I'm looking for this now. Unfortunately, if it breaks under this zone, we're gonna see something come down, right? We're gonna see some. I I really don't see it happening though because this is the bottom. This is where it started. Okay, so we're we're sitting at a good zone right here this line right here is an old line look it's it's right there with it okay so if you're a long-term investor the short price you know the, the short term doesn't really matter and we i did find a article on bit farms right right here so these guys are just saying that it's up 2.93 in the pre-market today guys they're saying that it's a good buy right now okay um out of how they rate it it's a low risk right now it's a good entry point is what they um indicated um during this period the stock fell as low as 581 as high as 919 okay and we're right around that range right bit farms is at 561 right now um so definitely a nice purchase price right now i think in my opinion not a tech not a financial advisor guys and um yeah these guys are, are pretty bullish as well so I'll put all these links down down below, of course. And then now we're gonna move on to Loop Ring, guys. Um, what I do like about it, you know, it's sitting at 241. Let's look at the daily chart. So it's down negative four percent for the day. Their market cap is the same, guys. Basically, you know, volumes hovering around the same. I like I pointed out the days to hold, the days to cover, or not days to cover. The, the typical days that people are holding it is uh, 21 days. That's gone up. And then again, pretty even, 50-50. We haven't heard any news as far as like from GameStop or from Loopring, but I like I told you guys, I like to stay up to date with this CryptoPanic.com, which I found this article that is very uh, bullish and talking about the numbers. And this is what I'm saying. There's a lot of money here with the NFTs. The biggest NFT marketplace challenges, challengers trying to top OpenSea. So OpenSea is number one right now, right? That's what most people use. Um, it's the leading NFT marketplace handling billions of dollars worth of transactions a month. Many new, many new marketplaces are launching to challenge OpenSea, increase, including the major cryptocurrency exchanges. So a lot of competition is starting up. Uh, let's see. So they led with nearly 10.7 billion of trading volume in Q3 alone, guys. That's a lot of money. With some 6.9 billion volume in trading to the last quarter. And 10 times surge in activity from July to August. Crazy. Remember, people, NFTs got hot, man. Real hot. And if you don't know, look, this is this is a perfect definition of an NFT. So it's a unique digital token that acts like a deed of ownership over just about anything, guys. It has multi-purposes, multi-uses. So you can, it's for the on the including art, music, and more, right? However, of course, nothing's perfect. It's talking about the gas fees, which Loopring has already said they want to reduce. So here are the competitors, guys. Coinbase, FTX, whatever that is. I haven't, I haven't heard of most of these, but they're out there. Nifty Gateway, and Infinity. That one, I don't know how to say that one. Rarible. Zora. Arishan, Arteon, Arteon, I don't know what that one is. Reddit, even Reddit, guys, is getting into this. And, you know, they could be a big competitor. And then this is the last part I'm going to touch on right here. Is another potential wild card as an established brand planning to launch 
and Ethereum powered NFT marketplace, right? Who is that? Is GameStop is reportedly using Loopring's layer two scaling technology, but it's still unclear when the video game retail will launch its platform. Boom, guys, right? Um, this is an awesome article. Again, I'll put the link down below. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Happy Friday, you know, be sure to relax this weekend. It was a wild week, guys. I know that, you know, when you look at the money going up and down, it's it's definitely, you know, emotional. But do when you're trading, guys, you have to take the emotions out of it, right? Use your logic, use your math, your, your numbers, and, and do a, follow your gut. Because most of the time, guys, in the markets, I will say that your gut will be right, right? So that's all I got for you guys. You know, thanks for uh, coming in today into the channel, watching it, the video. Uh, hopefully you gained some knowledge and some information from this. And I hope to see you guys on Monday. All right. All right. See you later.